I'm not a perfectionist. If I was, this video wouldn't exist because I'd be too busy fussing over every cut or trying to pick the perfect background music or fixing the light or writing the script or making sure my hair looked good. I've gotten very good at not worrying about these things over the years because this, this is a YouTube video. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. I know a lot of people who suffer from being perfectionists. It could be paralyzing. And it could stop you from taking the first step in creating something. It could stop you from learning and trying. I get it. You're afraid you'll look stupid. Well, as someone who's looked stupid many times in the past, I'm happy to share some of my advice. Yes, this is me giving advice on how not to be good at things. So 10 tips. Let's go. Embrace mistakes. After you hit publish, you're bound to see mistakes. You're going to want to pull that piece down and delete it forever. But it's often something inconsequential. Even if someone calls you out for it, embrace that. Someone actually took the time to let you know, even though they were a jerk while telling you. Say, thanks for catching that, or, oh man, my bad. It's going to happen. There's no avoiding it. There's way too many things to deal with. But with my next tip, I'm gonna help you get more comfortable making mistakes. Make a lot. Once you start making a lot, you stop being precious with each individual project. Mistakes that happen five, 10 projects ago don't matter anymore because your mindset is on to the next thing. You're going to make the next project better. When you have the mentality to make a lot, being perfect doesn't matter, but rather consistency, practice, patience, and incremental improvement becomes the goal. Give deadlines. If something is never due, then you never feel any pressure to finish. You can just keep working on it and working on it until the laws of diminishing returns leave any improvement so minuscule that it wouldn't even be noticeable. In fact, sometimes you end up working a project so much, you end up making it worse. Give yourself a time limit, not a quality limit. There's this old adage called the Parkinson's Law, which states that a task will expand to the time frame given to complete. If something is due in a week, you'll take the week to do it. If something is due in a month, you'll take the full month. The best way to do more is by shortening the deadlines. Create limitations. Much like setting deadlines, creating limitations is a good way to avoid getting bogged down by your perfectionism. Whether it's forcing yourself to write in a specific genre, having a maximum word count, or using a set structure like the hero's journey, you establish rules that you have to follow. Having complete freedom may sound great, but it's actually too nebulous for you to focus. You end up creating something too grand that keeps expanding and expanding, which is not great if you actually want to finish something. By setting limitations, you create a boundary for which your creativity can focus and flourish. Start something new. If you feel the pain of imperfection, if you've been staring at your work and are not sure how to fix it, then it's time to start something new. Clear the table of what you've been working on and begin again. The longer we spend on a project, the more invested we get in it, and the more we feel we need to do it justice. But it's that type of thinking that imprisons us. What we need to do is put that project aside, recognize that we're not at the level yet to get it to the standard we want, and start something new. I often tell myself, okay, in this new project, I'm going to learn how to do this. So by the end, I'll have the practice necessary to go back and attempt to fix what I couldn't in the previous project. Have a clear audience. Instead of making something that everybody would enjoy, which is impossible, when I feel like my work is imperfect, I try to think of one specific person that I'm creating for. Once I have this person in mind, for example, in this video, I'm thinking of someone like you who is probably wondering why my work is so imperfect and how do I live with myself? Knowing you, I have a clearer understanding of why I'm doing this and I feel supported. Also, don't be afraid to make things for yourself. Your audience can be you in the future. You could make a video for yourself next year. You could write a book that you will want to read. Making something for yourself is as worthwhile as making it for a million faceless fans. Yes, you might not make any money, but then again, you don't know until you finish. Work on multiple projects at once. I usually have multiple projects going on at once because if I ever get stuck, tired, or angry at a specific project, 
I could just switch to another. This allows me to always be making something. Even though my attention is scattered, there's often progress happening on multiple fronts. Experts will tell you not to do this, and I'm no expert. However, it's with this diversifying method that has kept me from burning out. It's also helped me with continuous improvement. Maybe it's not as exponential as focusing on one project at a time, but in the end, I have something to show for it. And to me, that's worth a whole lot. Have a learning mindset. Much like advice number five, we should approach each project with an eagerness to learn, as opposed to the pressure of having to make it perfect. If you go into a project as an opportunity to learn something new, then you can actually measure the success of it, not by its merits, but rather the experience and the knowledge gained. Having that student approach is actually very humbling because it allows you to ask questions and discover as you go, as opposed to feeling like you need to land a perfect trick in front of a group of judges, which no one needs that type of pressure, except that you might lose it forever. Create with the knowledge that tomorrow, your project might disappear. Something might have happened to your hard drive and all the files are erased. Or there's a fire and all your materials burned to the ground. Know that what you're making is not going to last forever. It might not even survive the process of being finished. It's a terrifying thought, but it's a good reminder to not be so precious with our work and to do it because we enjoy it, not because we want something to be so astoundingly perfect that it could stand the test of time because nothing does. You are not perfect, neither is Rodney's. In our mind, we have this idea of a perfect project. In there, it is beautiful and complete and so very great. But because we're not perfect, as soon as we try to transfer it to the external world, we are bound to muddy it up. Languages, colors, and emotions appear and sound differently to different people. Even if you think something is perfect, you can't help how other people are going to respond to it. You are bound to make something someone will love, and you're bound to make something someone will hate. Those are my 10 thoughts on how I live with the fact that I'll never create something perfect, nor do I even try. But like I said, everyone should have their own process, and as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, then it doesn't really matter if you want to make something perfect or not. None of this matters. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want more imperfect content, about writing and the creative process, please do subscribe.